Hello everyone, on today's video we're going to talk about the difference between endurance and range and how to kind of calculate it on the fly. Let's go ahead and get started. Now first things first, uh, we're sitting here on a lovely Amuni 20. This is a Carnado. We talked about this a few weeks ago. Pretty neat plane. Now, uh, as I've joked in the past, it is not a very large plane, but that's not the point. The reason I chose this one for today's demonstration is we have a bunch of instrumentation which is going to make this really, really, really easy to demonstrate, as well as uh, help you understand what's going on here. So what's the difference between range and endurance? Endurance is simply, how much time do I have before my engine shuts off because it ran out of fuel? Range is, how fast am I going, times how long I can stay in the air. Now, you're probably sitting there going, well, that makes pretty much sense. Uh, how do we calculate? Well, we'll do it really, really basically for you first, and we'll go ahead and calculate endurance. So in this case, I've got 46 in one side, 48 in the other side, and I'm burning currently 13.8 gallons per hour. So let's go ahead and grab my handy dandy calculator. 46 plus 48 divided by 13.7 is going to be 6 hours, 0 0.86, 0 0.86 times 60, is going to be 6 hours and 51 minutes of fuel on board this aircraft right now. This is a very, very, very long-range aircraft, and I don't know about you, but I don't think my bladder could last 6 hours and 51 minutes. You never know. But this is where things get interesting. Now that we know our endurance, we can now calculate our range. The only way we know range is if we know what our ground speed is. Now, there's a lot of different ways to get ground speed. We could take true airspeed and try to work the wind. Uh, we could use our GPS, which is exactly what I'm going to do, because, haha, I have one. And it looks like our ground speed is 155. So all we have to do now is grab this, 6.86 times 155, gives us a whopping range of 1,063 nautical miles, assuming the weather does not change. Now, that's a tremendously long distance, like I said, for a little plane like this. You're going to be a little kinked out by that time. Now, the reason we're doing this, too, is so that we can explore some of the factors that can influence endurance and range. All right, so the first thing that can always influence range is whatever power settings you're going to be using. In this case, uh, we have our throttle for manifold, we have our blue, our prop handle, and of course, we've got the mixture, which everybody's so scared to play with. I gotta tell you, I was pretty terrified of this one in the real world. I'm, I don't know, this one still makes me crazy because there's this little wheel on it that you can kind of see, and you kind of twist the wheel in order to make it do things, but don't worry about it too much. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and set our power, which we've done. We're at uh, 2300 RPM-ish. We're at 23 inches of mercury. This is called flying square. <laughs> you're never gonna get this accurate in the real plane. You think it's as bad as him? Try it in the real plane. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and lean out the mixture and see if we can improve our economy a little bit. Whoop, too much. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. You're probably going, why is the number getting bigger? Don't worry. Give me a minute. There we go. We're in the green now. I'm watching up here. Now we're a fuel injected airplane, so technically we can actually go past peak here. I don't recommend it, but we can. So our peak temperature is going to be, oh my gosh, look at that, 15, oh, we're way in the right here. And it looks like about 1522. So this is my maximum peak temperature. And I look over here and I notice my fuel economy. I've gone up to 14.1 gallons per hour. I've actually increased my fuel consumption. Now I find that a little strange, except you have to remember this aircraft is a slightly different engine system than most aircraft, which causes that kind of weirdness. Normally, if this were like a Cessna 172, the more you pull that back, the smaller that number is going to get. But you can see just by having manipulated, it has changed things. Now, one thing you probably observed is as soon as I adjusted the mixture, our speed increased. Why did our speed increase? Our speed increased because our engine is now burning its fuel more efficiently. Uh, before, when we were just kind of chugging along there, we were basically running with too much fuel, and the engine was going, oh, I'm trying, but I just can't make it. I'm sorry. So what we did is we went ahead and um, put it a little bit closer to its correct operating range, and now all of a sudden, if you take a look, we're now doing 165. So you're saying, but wait, you're using more fuel. Well, let's see what happens. So let's go ahead, 46 plus 48 divided by 14.1, that number should look pretty familiar, <laughs> conveniently, times 160, see here, 166. Ding. Notice my range has now increased by almost 100 nautical miles, and I'm traveling faster because I took some time to go ahead and set my air fuel mixture correctly. So there are other things, of course, we can think about here too. Now, what if, for example, uh, we wanted to try to increase it even more? Well, it's gonna get a little complicated. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find a spot, and usually your little power table in your POH would do this for you, where we're going to burn the least amount of fuel for the most amount of speed. Once you start getting really, really, really slow with the engine, you're not actually going to be going all that fast, which means you're basically going to have all that drag that's going to slow you down. It's actually start going to hurt your economy here. So let's go ahead and use a different power setting here. I'm going to use something a little bit lower. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, reduce my manifold pressure here. We're going to do uh, 20 and 21. So I'm going to go down to 20 inches here. I'm going to reduce my RPM to 2100. Oh, notice. 
can't do 2100. The green arc starts at 22. So we'll do 20 and 22 then. There we go. Whoa, too much. Some of these old engines are very, very, very picky about what RPMs you run them. Whoop, 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 whoop. Begin the insanity. Perfect. So we have 20 inches of mercury, 2200. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and adjust our mixture again a little bit. Make sure it's set correctly. Push it in a little, too much. Pull it out a little, pull it out. Whoop, too much. And I'm feeling like that's, whoop, 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 whoop right there perfect so it's going to be our peak power right there and it also has this nice little blue arc reminder we're right in the middle of the blue arc we're perfect so now we're burning 12.2 gallons per hour so let's see what that did to our endurance so 45 plus 48 keep in mind we burnt a gallon a minute ago divided by uh, what are we looking at here 12.2 so that's a 7.62 hours that's a substantial increase i've added an hour to our time by pulling the rpm back by, uh, what was it, 100 RPM? So you can probably get an idea. Now here's the problem. We have increased our endurance, but have we done anything to our range? Remember, that's how far we can go. Well, if I come down here, you'll notice my ground speed has been slowly decreasing this entire time. I'm now doing about 158 over the ground. So coming back to my calculator, times 158, you'll see that my range has increased again. So even though my aircraft is only traveling seven knots faster, I now have the ability to travel 1,200 nautical miles, even though I just burned a bunch of fuel to get to this point. Now, sometimes what you want to do is you actually aren't going for range. You're going for trying to keep the plane in the air at the longest possible time. Now, in order to do that, that's going to get a little bit tricky. You have to use what the acceptable arc is for this aircraft. Now, believe it or not, according to the book, we can do this. Ooh. Let's give it a second to settle. Whoa, it's, gonna, it's not going to like that very much. There we go. We can do something like this. We're at 2200 RPM, and 15 is the absolute minimum that the book says you can even jokingly go down to. So in this particular case, you can see I'm now burning Cessna 172K uh, fuel economy, and we're probably going to end up with Cessna 172K speeds, too, if I let that go out for a second. So let me uh, speed up time here and see what happens. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. I'm noticing the nose of the plane is starting to come up a little bit, too. Oh boy, we're getting slow. We are getting slow. All right, that looks about as slow as it's going to get. Let's call it 125. Return back to normal time here. Let's go ahead and mix, mess with the mixture. Let's see here. Can I... Boop, boop. I think it was pretty... No, it was pretty optimum. Yeah, it was basically perfect. Perfect. By the way, my cylinders are repeating. I need to open up the cow flaps. This will cause a lot of damage. Please don't let your engines get hotter than 400. All right, so let's see what we did here. We're going to ignore that number. Ignore, ignore. It's not there. You're hallucinating. Shh. <laughs> All right, so we're running 72.2 gallons per hour, and we're at 125 ground speed. So let's grab it and see what happens. So we'll do the 48 plus 45 divided by 7.2. Gets us 12.91 hours times 125. Gets us a range of 1,600 nautical miles. <laughs> Any desire to fly down to Miami from Boston? Oh my gosh, that's a long range. So you can see immediately why there's the different power settings. Of course, if you probably have noticed, I've been on the same trip this entire time, you probably noticed the difference in time for a flight this short. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and now reset everything here. Let's go come back up to our existing. We always want to do pitch before power. So I'm gonna go ahead and nudge the RPM lever up just a tiny bit. That wasn't a tiny bit, that was a lot of it. Ha, <laughs> it's like a lot of it. Ugh, this thing is so difficult, just like the real plane, I love it. All right, let's push this up to 23 and 23. There we go. Just got to nudge it just a teeny tiny bit on the prop. Er, whoop, too much. Too much. Too much. There we go. Perfect. It's about 2,300 there. We'll go ahead and now fits with the mixture. It should be pretty close. I don't think it's going to be off that much. Whoop, too much. And uh, right there. So we're back up to 14.2, but you're noticing my estimated time en route here is rapidly decreasing. Remember, the longer the flight that you take, the more effect messing with your power settings is going to have. So in this case, this is not a very long flight. So yeah, we've knocked six or seven minutes at it, but we've also doubled our fuel consumption. So it's all very, very interesting to take a look at it. Now, here's the tricky, 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 tricky part. And this is uh, one of my favorite calculations. How much fuel are we going to have at this power setting when we get to our destination? Ooh, that's, that's cool. That's cool. So here's what we do. we got to see how long our flight's going to take. In this case, it's going to take about an hour. So we're going to multiply an hour by our current fuel consumption. So 14.2, 14.2 plus times 1, because it's 1 hour. This means we're going to burn 14.2 gallons in this hour. So now if we take our current fuel, 44 plus 48 minus 14.2, 
you can see we'll have 77.8 gallons remaining when we get to our destination. Now this is a super duper handy calculation. Let me show you why. Let's say we want to travel somewhere different. You know, um, Ocean City sounds like a nice spot, but I was really feeling like uh, going down to Charlotte. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll pop out our handy dandy GNS 750 here. Eventually, there we go. I'm not thrilled with how hot that temperature is. I'm actually gonna enrich in the mixture just a teeny tiny bit to see if I can get that number to come down. Yeah, it's gonna cost me in fuel flow, but this number should get smaller. All right, so let's go K C L T Charlotte. That actually makes that sound in the real plane, which I find kind of amusing. It doesn't do it in the sim usually, but that's okay. So we'll come back here, we'll go back to nav mode, and I can see that my target is 477 nautical miles away. So now the cool thing is here is how much fuel is that going to take us? Oh, well, the cool thing is we could sit here and we could crunch the numbers. We could actually have it display, you know, the time to go. The real GNS, by the way, up in the tippy top here, you actually have a distance meter. We don't get that on this version for some reason. So let's go ahead and do it the easy way. So we notice that we have 476 miles and we're doing 166 knots. 476 divided by 166 is 2.87 total hours time. So if we multiply that by our 15 gallons per hour, we can see that we're gonna burn 43 gallons of fuel. 44 plus 48, minus 43. You can see that's gonna leave us with 49 gallons of fuel, which is gonna get us there no problem. Now let's say we wanna to go to Atlanta. Come in here, K, A, T, L, whoa, Cal. <laughs> A, T, L, looks pretty good to me. Enter, activate, boop, 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 boop. That's the sound it should make. I believe that's the sound it makes in Jeopardy when you get the categories, but that's all right. So swinging around over here, we're going to line ourselves up. Hey, I got the temperature to come down a little tiny bit. So now we're looking at a 663 distance. 663. And we're now, because we changed our wind position, we're doing about 170. Divided by 170 times 15. That's a 58.5 gallons minus 44 minus 48. That's going to leave us with 33 gallons to go. Not bad. So now we'll do one more. Just like I said, just as an exercise, and we'll go down to Miami. <laughs> so now here's the question. Can we get to Miami? Now, if you ever take the commercial flight, you have to do this calculation in your head without all these fancy doodads to kind of work these numbers out. So 954. All right, let's do it. You already know the answer, I know. Divided by 172. Uh, let's see here. Times 15. Minus 44. Minus 48. That gets us eight gallons of gas to go. Isn't that incredible? We actually have the ability now to actually calculate how many gallons of gas we'd like left when we get there. So for example, you, know, you can see we have 44 plus 48. Let's say we want to be left with something silly like, uh, let's leave ourselves with uh, 15 gallons. So that's 77, 77 divided by, let's see, 952, 952 divided by 175, 77 divided by 5.44. That's going to get us 14.15 gallons per hour will give us that exact number. So I can actually sit here and pull the throttle back a little bit. And put it right there. Ta-da! So now keep in mind, as we reduce speed, this number is going to change too. So I'm not actually going to get to pull the throttle back that far. I'm going to have to go back and put it that one way. So hopefully you can see the relationship now between how much fuel you're carrying, how fast you're going, and what your range is going to be. And also how important this red handle is. Now, of course, if I were to jam that red handle all the way in right now, you'd see my temperatures basically drop off. Let me actually stick this back in, get us back in the blue region here, and see if this comes down. I need cow flaps, man. Give me the good cow flaps. Again, do what your POH recommends. I'm just abusing this as a flight sim, sort of an exercise here. Let me go ahead and put all that away, make sure everything's in good shape. Now, the last thing we're going to take a look at here when we're talking about range and endurance is going to be the blue handle versus the black handle. Now, you're probably sitting here going, okay, I, f I follow. I get that. I get that. I get that. Um, is it possible to do lead the black handle all the way in and pull the blue handle out until you get to your proper fuel economy? Sure. Let's find out what happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave my handle all the way in. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this RPM back until I get just to the tippy top where it says you're not supposed to go less than that. 2200. All right, whoop, a little too much there. Remember, it's going to make you mad trying to get that number perfect, just like the real plane. So that puts me at about 15.5 gallons per hour. About typical, about typical. 15.5. So let's reverse the process. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to go ahead and increase the RPM. There we are. And now I'm going to go ahead and reduce the manifold pressure. There we go. So what did you notice? At least what I hoped you noticed is that when we decrease the RPM, the fuel flow went up. Um, I don't think it's supposed to do that, but that's okay. The big thing to notice there, though, in flight sim at least, is the fact that reducing RPM doesn't have nearly as big of an impact of a range as reducing manifold pressure. As a matter of fact, you can see I'm sitting here. I'm actually going to push it up to full RPM. 
There we go. Oh yeah, buzz buzz. Now notice, my fuel flow actually went down. Uh, this is a flight simism. This is not a real worldism. As a matter of fact, I like the blue handle. I can set the exact fuel flow that I want by tweaking and getting weird RPMs like 2264 or something like that. So, but now notice, at 2500, just going up a single inch is added almost a gallon per hour. If I push the throttle all the way forward, you can see I've added three or four gallons per hour. Now the last thing you're probably wondering is, isn't atmospheric pressure 2992? It is, but um, if you look out the window here, you'll realize, and you look at our altimeter, that we're actually at 8,000 feet. This aircraft is actually incapable of producing its maximal horsepower up this high. And because of that, at full throttle, I'm actually not making the full power that I could be making, which requires me to actually increase my RPM in order to get a little bit closer to it. So hopefully this video is helpful as far as you realize the difference between those two. If you ever need to get those numbers, like I said, it's great when you have this. Uh, one thing that works really, really well for those of you who have it is using external instruments. So uh, one of the things I have on my third monitor here is I have this guy. It's a G5 on top of a G5. But I also have this nice little instrumentation page right here, which is wonderful. Because according to this one, my cylinder head temperature is fine, but it'll actually tell you what your time to empty is. And it'll even tell you how much fuel you've used. Keep in mind, just open this up. It'll also give you things like your fuel flow as a decimal, how much fuel you're carrying per side. And it's a really, really, really neat instrument because it allows you to basically predict these numbers very, very accurately because you can actually watch it in action. So for example, if I were to pull the sucker back, you can actually watch the numbers change and you can see that calculation directly. Uh, this particular instrument, for those of you, this is for Air Manager, by the way, if you've not played with it before. This instrument's called the JPI EDM 900, if you want to fit with it. I think it's really, really cool because you can see your exact consumption. This is real fun to try with jets because these numbers are in the thousands. This little propeller jockey, you know, you don't have to worry about that so much. But one of the cool things is you can see how long is my trip going to take? Then you come down here and play with the throttle a little bit. <laughs> Look at how close I got it. And then you can go ahead and set it exactly what you need to do. Other than that, Enjoy.